uh, just to give you a, a, an idea of what we are talking about, uh, congenital immune defects are uh, rare complex genetic defects. Uh, the onset of this disease is general in uh, early in, uh, in life, uh, and they can onset with uh, infections, with uh, uh, oops, uh, with inflammation, or with autoimmunity features, or uh, with uh, uh, lymphoproliferations, and uh, if uh, about five ten years. Um, I should have talked about uh, 30, 40, 50, more or less, uh, genetic, identified genetic defects. Nowadays, uh, with the improvement of uh, the next generation sequencing uh, techniques, uh, um, we can talk about more than uh, 300 uh, defined genetic defects. Um, Obviously, these, uh, these defects are um, comprise a wide spectrum of symptoms, <coughs> and uh, um, more or less annually, uh, a committee uh, publish uh, a new uh, mm, list, uh, the, the list of new uh, discovered and defined uh, immune deficiencies, and propose eventually new classification. Uh, but Overall, um, uh, we um, are in the field of uh, these defects and we help the diagnosis of these defects. These defects are genetic, so need genetic tests to define and find the mutations. Uh, but we can help clinicians to, uh, with uh, our tests uh, to address the, the molecular analysis or uh, also uh, to uh, um, help the diagnosis and uh, follow the outcome of these um, diseases, and also we can help uh, the monitoring of the treatment. Um, what and how we do that? Uh, the diagnostic workup in a case of suspect of genetic de of uh, genetic immune defects. Uh, starts uh, at the level of general physician when uh, uh, the clinician suspects uh, immune defects uh, should um, uh, um, request a first level test that can include the complete blood count, uh, the evaluation of serum immunoglobulins or evaluation of specific antibodies and when these tests uh, are positive, uh, an immunologist had the, the, uh, the task to, to request a second level test that can, that can include a specific tests for the specific organ uh, involved in that specific uh, immune defect. And uh, in uh, this topic, uh, we can help with our test that can include the, the evaluation of lymphocyte subpopulation, the uh, evaluation of uh, the expression of specific markers, and also uh, by doing functional tests. Um, just to give you uh, an overview of the complexity of the uh, uh, field, um, I try to um, group some uh, of the um, immune deficiencies and uh, um, list the possible tests we can perform to um, address the diagnosis. Uh, but I have to do that one single test is almost never sufficient to diagnose the uh, defect. We need to group and mix uh, different uh, tests and assay to have a complete picture of the immune status of the patient. Um, what is the, uh, the techniques available to do this? Uh, yesterday with uh, Francesca we talked about the, uh, the, the type of uh, antibody staining. 
uh, surface maker, surface maker markers, intracellular and intranuclear markers. And uh, I mm, used to mm, uh, call them a phenotypic test. Uh, with, mm, because with this test you can make a, a picture of the um, uh, of the immune population of the patient. But with the uh, functional test uh, by which you stimulate the cells and uh, um, measure the response to a particular stimulus um, of the cells from the patient compared to uh, the cells from a, a healthy control, uh, you can uh, perform uh, this functional test uh, and there is a, a protocol for uh, several functional tests. Uh, today I talk about uh, two or three of, of uh, such tests. Um, uh, the advantages of cytometry in uh, this field uh, is uh, uh, this. Well, we talk, uh, we already talked about the um, uh, the quick analysis and the result uh, for um, immunostaining uh, of surface markers in one to two hours uh, from you uh, get the sample, you have comprehensive results for um, several panel of um, uh, multicolor flow cytometry. Um, we have uh, already uh, talked about the specificity of the target because we use uh, monoclonal antibodies and we can, uh, and the, the, the possibility to have a, a wide range of uh, antibody from the companies give us the possibility to uh, select the best uh, targets, target to, um, uh, to check for uh, specific immune deficiencies. Um, and uh, uh, finally, the functional test um, can give you, um, I try to uh, explain uh, this sentence, um, with functional test you can test, say, the, uh, the, um, the functionality of a, a subset of cell or um, a particular um, population. And uh, um, in, uh, in patient with, um, uh, without the genetic uh, um, mutation identified or now that we have uh, um, the next generation sequencing technique, um, the functional test can help you to understand effectively what happens in the cells of the patient. Um, I mean, I, um, I do a next generation sequencing for a patient and I don't understand what I have. I, don't, uh, I can't give a name to the diagnosis, but I have a, um, a biological theory of what is, happened, uh, what is happening in the patient. So I uh, set up functional tests and I uh, can have a proof of what effectively um, happen in the patient. And um, with this, uh, I can um, hint the clinician to uh, maybe uh, to um, request for a compassionate or off-label um, treatment for the patient that without genetic uh, don't deserve, for example. Um, but the disadvantages of this technique in our um, field is uh, uh, the problem of the healthy controls because uh, I, uh, I read here who is healthy because um, for sure no one of us have an immune defect, a genetic immune defect. Uh, but in the normality, Maybe my NK cells do not respond properly as a normal control in a particular setting because it is normal. And so I can uh, use my NK cells to, to, uh, as a control for NK test 
but I'm not sure that my ankle cells respond properly. And so when I, I compare to um, the, uh, the patient sample, I'm not sure that my non-response is correct, is correct and uh, uh, the patient so is normal as me. Um, and also, Juicy yesterday um, uh, says, um, talk about the positive control when you set up the instrument. And in a clinical setting, it's quite difficult. Because the positive control is your patient, maybe. Be mm, this is rare disease, this is pediatric disease. Uh, so when I have to set up an experiment for the only patient with this particular disease, I can set up uh, the protocol, can set up the uh, multicolor panel, can set up the instrument properly on a control sample. But until I have the positive control, I can be sure that my protocol, my, uh, my setting is working well. And the positive control, maybe, is the patient. Um, we are, uh, I have already uh, told you that uh, uh, the sample is, is uh, rare and uh, often small because uh, um, uh, most of the um, patient is uh, uh, children or uh, more or less. And uh, also, uh, in, uh, um, in this uh, uh, field, uh, we uh, test uh, um, cells collected from uh, uh, peripheral blood from patients that can, which can, which uh, can, which do take uh, drug therapy. And uh, drugs can alter the fluorescence, but can uh, influence the cell viability, can influence the cell count, and so uh, um, when you uh, do functional tests on. Uh, uh, cells from a uh, patient, you uh, be aware about that. Um, um, very briefly, because uh, we talk uh, about that uh, several times, um, the most common procedure is the uh, surface staining with monoclonal antibodies. Uh, you can perform uh, uh, lice and wash. Uh, or you can perform lice no wash uh, protocol to uh, have a, a absolute count of your sample. And then once you have uh, your cell stained, you can analyze by flow cytometry. Um, this is the typical um, panel we perform almost on all uh, patients we see. Um, this is the TBNK profile that evaluates the main lymphocyte subpopulation. Uh, this is a panel of uh, eight uh, um, antibodies uh, because we um, check uh, uh, simultaneously the TBNK profile and the uh, presence of uh, recentemic emigrants that I talk, that I talk uh, later. Uh, but for TBNK, uh, TBNK profile, we get on CD45 lymphocyte. On them, we uh, check the presence of the um, CD16, CD56 uh, natural killer cells, the CD19 positive uh, B lymphocyte, and CD3 positive T lymphocyte, on which we see the uh, percentage of uh, CD4 positive T helper cells and CD8 T cytotoxic uh, cells. Um, um, I must say that uh, it is not sufficient for uh, the majority of the immune deficiency. Um, it is very useful for the severe combined immune deficiency with onset uh, in the first year of life because these immune deficiency lack one or more of this population. So with this profile, you can check uh, the type of um, uh, immune deficiency. Uh, but uh, uh, for the other immune deficiency is absolutely not sufficient. 
And um, on this uh, topic, I want also to uh, highlight that uh, um, we um, make on, the, on our patients always one, uh, two or more panels. And this can uh, guarantee that uh, um, we use a different panel in which uh, we have mixed, um, I try to explain uh, clearly. Um, we uh, use uh, the same antibodies in different panels, such as a CD3, uh, in order to check if in different panels with different mix of antibodies, the CD3 give me the same results as an internal control. Also, you can use different clones or different fluorochrom conjugation uh, on the same uh, antigen uh, and check in different panel if different uh, monoclonal antibodies, anti-CD3 different monoclonal antibodies, give you the same results. Uh, and this is one of the um, one of the tip uh, that I uh, mentioned. Um, since we have to um, ensure the absolute accuracy of results because we respond to a patient, to a clinician, not to a reviewer, um, we uh, we need uh, and we do not use isotype control for surface staining because it, it, it would be too expensive and uh, we cannot use always a, a control samples uh, because uh, it would be uh, time consuming and too expensive also. Um, so we, um, the major challenge is to find uh, internal and, ex and external um, control to be sure of your results. Uh, and these some tricks, um, some tips. Um, for sure, you have to uh, calibrate your instrument uh, whenever it's needed. And uh, if you have, uh, if you are lucky, maybe you have uh, some standard controls to check you are working well. Uh, and uh, um, about that, uh, I. Um, and I have to say that you have to set up properly the instrument and your protocol and your mix of antibodies. We talked uh, this morning also with Juzi. And, but I want to highlight and strongly recommend you when you are setting up a new uh, experiment, a new panel, I strongly recommend you to uh, share your ideas with other groups, with other um, expertise, with the specialists of the company, because it is not a waste of time, but it's an investment. Um, for the, uh, in, into the specific for the TBNK profile, we can check our uh, accuracy of the results by um, uh, compare our results with the complete blood count. Uh, in fact, uh, we can uh, get on the single uh, leukocyte uh, population and check if our percentage or uh, our absolute count uh, is comparable with the uh, complete blood count. And so, um, this is a guarantee that I'm, I am working very well. And I can assume that if I work well with CD45 in identifying the principal leukocyte uh, population, I can assume I work well with other uh, antibodies. It's not sure, but I can assume. Um, also, as an internal check, you can uh, sum up um, the principal uh, subpopulation, so T lymphocyte, B lymphocyte, and NK cell, uh, and the sum of the percentage of this population had to be near to uh, 95 to 100% uh, of the total lymphocyte, obviously. Um, also, as a control, uh, in particular um, case, you can count upon the, de the so-called delta check. So you um, track your uh, results uh, in... Uh, um, 
following um, analysis of the same sample. Um, as an example, at the first uh, analysis on this patient, we see a double positive, uh, an enriched uh, population of double positive CD4, CD8 uh, T lymphocyte. It, it is quite strange in our peripheral blood. Um, and so, uh, actually, we can't uh, um, address any hypothesis about that. Maybe this is simply uh, immature cells, but I not can be sure that uh, I mistaken something. Maybe I mistake to put the uh, antibodies in the mix that day, because I do not have controls. So I, um, what we can do? We request another control, another sample from the same patient, and in, the, in, the, in, a, sequ in a subsequent uh, analysis, we find the same population. So maybe it's not a mistake of antibodies, of mix, or protocol that day. But maybe it is a, a feature of this patient. Uh, I do not, not have a, um, a sure um, response of what happened in this patient, but this is a, an example for you that um, control uh, several times in a, a different moment the same, if you have the possibility. Uh, the same uh, patient can help you to um, uh, ensure that you are working well, even if you have strange results. Well, uh, your question could be right, but we can ask a biopsy of lymph nodes from the patient <coughs> only for check if my results are accurate, is accurate. No, because you are going to, to diagnose patients, right? But um, uh, it um, is quite rare that we have um, biopsy uh, from lymph nodes from this type of patient. Children. children, yeah. But um, uh, regardless, they are children. Um, uh, if is not uh, if uh, uh, the biopsy is uh, uh, if if the biopsy is not a, a clinical procedure need for clinical purpose, we do not have the biopsy. Um, so if, this is the problem for us because we have the peripheral blood. Um, we already talked about the mix of antibodies uh, earlier, and so I um, go quickly. And uh, uh, finally, uh, we need a close, a strong collaboration with the clinician to in for the interpretation of the results. Uh, in the example of the double positive uh, CD4, CD8 uh, um, uh, um, population, uh, we call the clinician, and we share uh, our ideas, our problems, in order to understand if, at the first uh, scene, if uh, these have a biological, clinical um, uh, reason, and so to understand if it is uh, really, it is true, or it is an artifact. Um, I mentioned the recent timic emigrants, uh, and uh, um, very quickly, um, they are, are um, a population of uh, T cells that express uh, CD45 array and CD31 uh, uh, antigens. Uh, they are comparable with the um, uh, the, the analysis by flow cytometry of RTE is comparable with the genetic test uh, that measure the presence of, the, of this uh, circular DNA. Um, 
as the name says, the, these cells are um, just released from the thymus. And this uh, circular DNA is the uh, residual of uh, uh, DNA rearrangement. And uh, um, during proliferation in the periphery, this uh, DNA will be diluted. Uh, um, just to give you um, an idea, this test, uh, this screening is used in newborn uh, in US uh, to screen for uh, severe combined immune deficiencies. Uh, in uh, uh, flow cytometry, we can uh, um, uh, evaluate this population by the staining uh, uh, with these uh, uh, markers, and RTE is double positive for CD31 and CD45 array. Uh, these populations are highly, uh, highly expressed in, uh, um, in children and then tend to decrease during uh, age, in favor to uh, the memory T cells population. Um, this is a, a useful tool so, to uh, screen for uh, severe combined immune deficiencies and uh, thanks to the different uh, um, pattern of expression of these um, markers, we can also uh, identify different type of um, underlying mutation in this um, pathology. And also it is very useful in the monitoring after um, hematopoietic stem cell transplantation because you can uh, measure the thymic output of the cells. Uh, other panel we use uh, is the panel for the evaluation of maturation of B cells. Um, with the, this panel we can monitor how uh, cell, B cells uh, um, mature from uh, naive to uh, memory cells and this is very useful for uh, the characterization of antibody defects in, in uh, which you can see where the maturation uh, is stopped. So you can lack this population, you can lack this population and you can um, uh, stage your uh, immune deficiencies. Um, another um, useful uh, subpopulation is the evaluation of the double negative T lymphocyte. The double, neg double negative T lymphocyte is the uh, T lymphocyte that, that, that uh, do not express uh, CD4 nor CD8. But uh, um, normally we have less than 15% of total DNT in the periphery. But uh, in uh, uh, genetic lymphoproliferative disorders or apoptosis defect, uh, this um, population can expand and uh, the, pa uh, the pathogenic uh, DNT uh, also express the uh, alpha-beta TCR uh, rather than uh, gamma-delta TCR and also um, I report that because this is a, um, a strange thing uh, to do because we use to detect um, truly pathologic uh, DNT by using an anti-mouse uh, CD45. Uh, this uh, anti-mouse CD45 called uh, B2020 uh, is able to recognize an, a particular isoform of human CD45 and this particular isoform uh, is seen to be uh, strictly correlated with lymphoproliferative disorders. So when you see a pattern such as this, this is a, a, a healthy control, there's no, uh, there's, um, there's no DNT, total DNT. These total DNT do not express uh, more or less uh, alpha-beta TCR. And on alpha-beta TCR, there's no expression of B2020 to 120. In a, a, in a patient uh, with ABS, you have an expansion of total DNT. This DNT are quietly total uh, alpha-beta uh, TCR positive, and these alpha-beta uh, positive cells are uh, express these particular isoforms. Uh, this 
um, drive your diagnosis very, very uh, quickly. Um, another, uh, uh, just two other panels, um, we check the, the phenotype of, uh, the phenotype of uh, memory T cells. As for the B cells, we can monitor how uh, CD4 and CD8 uh, move from naive towards effector cells. And this is useful for um, um, refine and in-depth analysis for uh, different uh, immune deficiencies. And uh, moving from lymphocyte to uh, granulocyte, also we can check the presence of the um, uh, addition molecule on the surface of the uh, granulocyte. And uh, as for this patient that lack uh, uh, one of these molecules, because it's totally uh, negative for CD11B, uh, uh, we can uh, um, easily address the um, diagnosis for leukocyte adhesion deficiency. Um, moving to intracellular staining, uh, I'll go quickly because we talked uh, uh, extensively yesterday uh, uh, about that, about uh, fixation and permeabilization and so on. Um, I report here an example. I don't want to bore you with uh, acronyms uh, and um, pathology, but just to give you an example, um, these two proteins, SAP and CIF, is uh, involved in uh, uh, lymphoproliferative disorders that are uh, genetical, uh, genetically determined, uh, in which uh, uh, after uh, um, infection, from uh, um, quite uh, um, uh, what can I say? Uh, uh, quite normal uh, um, uh, viruses. Uh, there is uh, um, an expansion of the cytotoxic uh, cells, and that can cause also a, a cytokine storm um, in this patient. Um, the evaluation of this protein is uh, quite simple because once you have set up your, uh, your protocol and your instrument, the identification of uh, the lacking uh, of uh, this protein in the patient is quite simple. But with, uh, in two, three hours, you have these results and you can um, call the clinician and say to him, well, I don't see, for example, SAP. Maybe your patient suffers from uh, histiocytosis and he can um, completely change uh, the, therapy, the, the therapy choice. Uh, also, for, uh, in the case of uh, macrophage activation syndrome, uh, that can um, uh, burst and explode immediately with a cytokine storm, and uh, uh, drive to a critical situation uh, very quickly. Uh, so, um, for sure, after this uh, evaluation, you need the genetic confirm. But um, waiting for the genetic confirm, the clinician can drive the therapy. Um, some tips and tricks for intracellular staining. Well, uh, PFA and uh, fixative we talked about uh, yesterday. Um, just to highlight that uh, um, fixation and permeabilization can uh, change uh, um, your, um, the scatter and the fluorescence of uh, your population. So be sure that you are looking at the right population when set up the instrument. And um, we already talked about different uh, buffer to perform also nuclear staining or phosphor flow staining or detection of intracellular cytokines. Um, I report just a few examples of our experience. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, isotype yesterday and, and uh, um, uh, we uh, I just want to share with you our experience, but we uh, create a panel 
for the identification of uh, viscotagic protein, that is an intracellular protein. Um, creating the panel, we choose the surface uh, antibodies uh, by checking the, uh, in the data sheet the isotype in order to avoid cross-reaction with the secondary antibodies with uh, the surface uh, staining. But, so, in the theory, I have made already, uh, well, I, I, I have made the, all uh, the thing well. But, when I run the, my experiment with surface antibodies, the secondary um, antibody alone shift and give a signal. Is not the signal of positive, for co of, of course, but is very different from the, uh, the sample without the surface antibodies. So, um, Juzi uh, said the same thing uh, this morning. Check in the data sheet, in the data sheets. Check with other groups. Check in literature, but test at the bench. Um, uh, the, uh, this slide, uh, I don't want to talk about uh, FOXP3 uh, regulatory T cells and uh, immune dysregulation correlated to FOXP3, but I want to give you uh, an insight on, um, by which you can have a, another internal control when you perform your experiment. Uh, well, I know that uh, um, uh, regulatory T cells is defined by the expression of it is lymphocyte, T lymphocyte, CD4 positive lymphocyte, and uh, um, as an identification marker, marker they, they express uh, uh, CD25, they ex express low levels of uh, uh, CD127 and they, of course, express the nuclear factor uh, FOXP3. So, uh, when I get on the uh, CD4 lymphocyte, I um, uh, check if I have a population of CD25 positive cells and uh, CD127 uh, deem uh, low, and that is, and it is about 6-7%. Uh, I'm quite, quite sure that they are uh, regulatory T cells. But as an internal control, I check if this population express FOXP3, and it, and it is, because all, almost all of these cells are FOXP3 positive. And also, I can check if looking at the CD25 and FOXP3 positive cells on CD4 um, positive T lymphocyte, I have the same population about, of the same population at this. And it's 6%, 6%, 6%, 7%. So I am quite sure that I'm looking effectively at regulatory T cells because I check the, sa the same population with different uh, gating strategy. Um, um, just uh, uh, um, an hint, when you um, perform uh, intracellular staining on uh, uh, functional tests, this is the expression of TNF-alpha after the stimulation in monocyte, after the stimulation with uh, different uh, TLR uh, stimuli. Uh, the two column is the same patient. In the first column, I performed the experiment after a uh, freeze and thaw um, procedure. And, uh, uh, and it seems that the patient is unable to respond to any uh, TLR uh, agonist. So um, I'm not sure that, is, that this is a, a truly um, analysis. So I ask for, the, uh, for another sample and I performed the same test uh, on freshly isolated PBNCs, and this is the result. Completely negative, completely positive. So uh, when you set up your experiment, your protocol, be sure that uh, the, how the viability of the sample can uh, um, uh, 
uh, affect your experiment and be sure that freeze and thaw procedure don't affect your functional test. Uh, another hint is that uh, the, the patient is also completely positive also for untreated control. And this, is, for me, is another problem. The first problem was when I uh, freeze the cells, but this problem is, seems to be solved. But in the second uh, experiment, I have a completely positive um, response also in untreated control, and I, I don't like this. Um, maybe, but I'm not sure, this is, um, since this is a, a sample that comes from uh, um, Treviso, if I remember correct, and I see a similar uh, pattern in another sample that came from Ancona, uh, maybe this is, is an artifact due to the transport of the sample. By, uh, but I cannot be absolutely sure about that. So another, uh, another time, I strongly recommend you, if you work in this field, to interact with the physician to interpret these results. TNF alpha. Um, no, I, um, well, uh, the protocol is uh, uh, well done because on sample, on control sample, the test is function perfectly. Yeah. The, 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 the setting uh, work well. The protocol is set. If I uh, check on a, a control sample, um, I do TNF alpha on my blood uh, several times, and, <laughs> and it works very well. So uh, there's no problem of stimulation, of concentration of stimuli, or uh, timing of the stimuli. Um, it seems to work well. We see uh, this problem of uh, also, uh, we performed this test. This test was uh, setting up uh, on uh, uh, Presento uh, cells, and it works. In this case, I don't know. So I think, uh, at first insight, I think, uh, I thought that uh, the, 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 the patient really lack the response. But the clinician says, I'm not sure about. Um, I expected that she responds. Uh, so, uh, for this reason, we repeat, uh, repeated this. Effectively, she can respond. I don't know. Yes. Yes. Um, first, yeah. Huh, I don't know. <laughs> this is the question. So uh, for this reason, I call the clinician and discuss the case. Because I think in this case, something has happened and the, the test uh, uh, is uh, a false positive. Uh, in this case, maybe, maybe the transport, maybe the, um, uh, some drugs that the, the patient is taking, uh, maybe, I don't know what, can cause this uh, signal. Uh, uh, I can only say that uh, um, we see the same problem from um, a patient, uh, a sample sent uh, in our lab from Ancona. So we think that could uh, be the transport in some way that can be affect this uh, protocol. But I'm not, I cannot be absolutely sure. Um, 
Functional test. As I mentioned before, for me, functional test is test in uh, which you uh, put in culture the cells uh, and uh, stimulate them uh, with uh, some stimulus. And after um, an incubation period, you perform your staining and you evaluate the response to the stimulus uh, comparing uh, the response of the patient to the uh, response uh, of uh, an healthy control. Um, there is a different uh, protocol for uh, analyze different uh, uh, kind of uh, um, activity in the cells and uh, these um, are the most common functional tests uh, for a diagnosis of uh, um, the immune deficiencies. Um, I want to share with you uh, some um, idea about uh, this test. Uh, the oxidative burst test, for example, uh, is the, uh, consists in the evaluation of the production of uh, uh, ROS uh, from uh, neutrophils. Uh, simply you put uh, mm, peripheral blood, you add uh, uh, your stimuli that can be the formal or um, bacteria, you add uh, the hydroroidomine and after 20-30 uh, minutes um, the neutrophils are able to uh, activate and produce uh, the um, reactive oxygen species ne needed to kill the uh, bacteria, and uh, in particular, the superoxide uh, um, oxidase the, the, uh, the, the hydroridomine into rhodomine that is fluorescent, and, uh, and uh, so I can check uh, the um, uh, by flow cytometry. Um, this is what we see. Uh, in untreated control, granulocytes do not produce uh, uh, ROS, so the peak is completely negative. Uh, in the presence of a chemical stimulus, uh, almost all the granulocytes uh, are stimulated to produce uh, ROS, and I see a peak uh, of uh, fluorescence. And uh, in the presence of uh, uh, bacteria, neutrophils are uh, engaged to phagocyte uh, and uh, kill the bacteria and uh, pro by producing ROS that oxidize the, the hydrorhodamine. And you can see a peak slightly um, uh, less fluorescent, fluorescent than um, that to see with PMA. Um, uh, as a normal, um, we have uh, more than 95% of granulocytes that uh, are able to produce uh, um, ROS. And this is, uh, this is a, um, a quick and uh, a mandatory uh, test to uh, diagnose the uh, chronic granulomatose disease, um, in which uh, you have a defect of, uh, of this pathway of, pro of production of ROS, and so the patient, after stimulus, are unable to produce a uh, sufficient amount of, uh, uh, of ROS. Um, the, um, CGD uh, is a genetic defect. Um, it uh, is... Uh, um, Almost, almost all the, the form of uh, CGD is X-linked, and uh, with this test you are able to identify uh, female carriers because female carriers have two population of granulocyte, one uh, with the, um, the ability of produce ROS that can be identified with uh, the, the positive peak, and one that can uh, are unable to produce ROS. So uh, in female carrier, you have a typical uh, picture of a double peak uh, in the um, rhodomine uh, fluorescence. Uh, I 
take this picture because um, you expected that it is a, a male uh, uh, patient with a, a CGD. But really, uh, actually, uh, she is a woman. And uh, she is not a carrier because she is uh, affected. Um, and this is a particular story I want to share with you just to, to uh, give you an example of what we do really in our lab. Um, uh, this is a story of uh, a patient, quite old for our standard because she, had, uh, she has uh, um, more than 50 years. And uh, um, she um, was hospitalized in an intensive care unit for severe pulmonary infection. Uh, and after exclusion of uh, secondary immune deficiency, um, the clinician uh, asked us to check for uh, CGD, even if uh, it is very strange to see, to diagnose this uh, particular um, immune deficiency in uh, older female. Uh, the, the test was positive because only 7% of, of hair granulocytes are able to produce uh, ROS. Uh, this um, test, these results address immediately uh, the search for um, mutation in the genes involved in uh, CGD. Uh, and uh, the strange things that happen that uh, uh, we find a mutation and the reason why the, the patient have a, a, a clinical history without episodes until this one is because there is a, a skewed inactivation of X chromosome and we know that uh, uh, the inactivation of X chromosome uh, can um, 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 augment the skewing during age. Uh, so this is why uh, um, we see this, uh, this case. Just to conclude the story, uh, after this analysis, the patient um, underwent hematopoietic, uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplantation at NIH, and now uh, it is uh, very good, very well. Um, uh, tips and tricks uh, of, uh, for this test. Uh, check for uh, DHR stability because we know, for, in our experience, if you resuspend in uh, DMSO, DHR can be stored uh, at minus 20 for years. Uh, now we move from uh, uh, handmade uh, um, protocol to uh, a certified kit because the, our institute uh, requests that. Um, and in, the, in this kit, DHR are suspended in uh, uh, water, and the stability is uh, really gar um, guaranteed for two, three weeks. Uh, because after maybe um, a, a spontaneous oxidation occurs, and you have the negative, the negative peak shift completely uh, through the positive um, signal. Um, about anticoagulant, in this case, anticoagulant is very fundamental because ADTA is not recommended. And also, uh, mm, uh, for this test, since the granulocytes are not very strong cells, uh, they not maintain uh, for a long time uh, um, in the, um, uh, uh, after the, the, uh, the sample. Um, ADTA um, affect strongly the, uh, the results because after 24 hours, if you have the, uh, the sample in ADTA, you can't see a positive peak, um, neither uh, with the PMA simulation nor with the uh, bacteria simulation. And uh, finally, um, if you use as a stimulus the bacteria, 
uh, assure that you are uh, that you put uh, your uh, sample in gentle shaking during incubation because uh, otherwise you can't see any signal. Um, proliferation, CFSC, we talked uh, uh, about that uh, earlier. Uh, I go very uh, quickly. We use uh, uh, CFSC to check, to track the proliferation. Uh, after the uh, first uh, uh, staining, uh, in, in um, subsequent division, uh, the, the tracker is diluted and uh, the fluorescence, uh, um, the peak of fluorescence uh, shift um, uh, toward the negative. Um, to do this, we uh, stain with the CFSC the cells, we put in culture with some stimulus, and after four to, se to seven days, uh, we uh, wash and check the proliferation. Uh, this is what we see. Uh, this is untreated control, so the resting cells with the uh, um, phytoimo agglutinin, we have a strong proliferation. This is the single generation of cell proliferated cells. With the uh, more specific uh, stimulus um, triggered by uh, anti CD3, anti CD28, we, ha we have uh, um, a quite uh, um, a less proliferation, but already we can see, uh, but um, again, we can see the, uh, uh, the generation. Uh, this is very useful uh, in uh, different uh, immune deficiencies, uh, in particular for the DeGeorge syndrome, in which we have uh, um, several uh, immune uh, um, problems, and one of these is that the, um, uh, the T cells are unable to proliferate properly after the stimulus. Um, so we can use this test to monitor the outcome of the disease during the year. Um, the problem with this protocol is that uh, uh, you have to uh, choose the right CFSC. The ori original CFSC is uh, um, emits in the uh, green fluorescence, but now you can choose uh, um, other uh, tracker in other um, to use in other channels. Uh, uh, I recommend to um, choose your CFSC and titrate uh, the concentration. Um, someone suggests that you have to titrate every single lot of CFSC. Um, and uh, um, another uh, hint is to uh, check the amount of protein you put in your staining buffer because CFSC binds the protein and you have to balance the concentration of the CFSC and the concentration of the protein, the timing of the, uh, the staining in order to have the maximum signal and the minimum uh, toxic effect. Um, it's in, indeed, CFSC is toxic, so um, you may consider to stain the cells with live dead staining uh, for the analysis. Uh, last one is the NK degranulation assays. In this case, uh, we stimulate the cells with a cell line, uh, a tumoral cell line. And uh, uh, we, put, we, we put in culture also uh, the antibody of detection of the, um, uh, the granulation. After two hours, uh, we stain with the surface antibody to the, detect the NK cells and then analyze. Uh, what happens during uh, the two hours? Uh, NK, cell, NK cells in the presence of tumor cells are stimulated to degranulate and uh, the, the vesicles uh, moving toward the, the uh, cell membrane fuse with the cell membrane and release the cytotoxic granule. Um, on the uh, internal vesicles, there is uh, uh, some uh, molecules such as CD107A. Uh, and uh, during the, uh, the culture, um, this uh, antigen 
is presented on the cell surface and I can detect it with uh, the antibody. Uh, this is very useful for um, disorder of the trafficking of this vesicle, of course, and also to check uh, um, functionality of NK cells in the uh, disease uh, such as uh, histiocytosis or macrophage activation syndrome. Um, this is what we see. This is a patient with one of the disorders of the trafficking of the vesicles. Um, after two hours, we see a clear signal of uh, uh, the granulation uh, based on the expression on the cell surface of uh, CD107A. Uh, while the patient suffering from uh, this pathology show uh, uh, um, a lower or absent um, expression of this uh, um, marker. Um, in this set, you have to check for sure the viability both the, of the target of the cell, of target cells and uh, and the um, PBNCs. And um, you can have problem uh, with the, the count of the um, the PBNC after the phycol separation. It is occurs very um, often. Um, so an um, uh, a tip to um, overcome this problem is if you have a sufficient amount of cells is to put in culture in different ratio target cells and uh, PBNCs in order to um, cover a, um, a wide range of uh, uh, um, ratio and uh, uh, if you had some mistake in counting your cells or the viability of the target cells is not uh, optimal, uh, maybe in one of this ratio you can um, see your result, um, uh, your optimal results. Um, this test can be performed on uh, uh, freshly isolated PBNC, or you can uh, um, culture this PBNC overnight uh, with the supplementation of IL-2, and this is useful because we can store, uh, we can store uh, by freezing or by fixing these cell, uh, cells for functional test. And so you can perform your test today, put in culture with IL-2, and if today, for <laughs> many reasons, the, uh, the test is not working well, or you want to check, check after the culture if some um, something can be changed, uh, can, can change, you can rerun your assay tomorrow on cultural cells. Um, the future challenge is uh, mm, uh, due to the uh, inversion of the uh, diagnostic workup that happened in this, uh, in this uh, um, um, era. Uh, the next generation sequencing uh, now is, uh, um, uh, is uh, exploding and uh, um, is more convenient to uh, check for a panel of genes or uh, for whole exome sequencing um, at first line uh, uh, analysis and then after I, I, I have uh, made the sequencing and I selected all the uh, potential damaging variant, uh, confirm the, pathogenetic, uh, the, the, um, the pathogenesis of the disease by functional testing flow cytometry. This is what uh, it, it is happen, happening now in this moment uh, in this field. Um, I go very quickly on two uh, examples of what I have just said. This is the case of Justin with whole exome sequencing uh, we find a known mutation and we start uh, um, a, series of, a series of functional tests um, to allow her to uh, enter experimental protocol uh, for therapies. And uh, the other one is the case of Simone, in uh, uh, which by whole exome sequencing we find a, a new mutation and now uh, Federica and Julia know very well the problem 
we are, are um, uh, spending uh, much time and much effort, uh, and many efforts uh, in functional tests to um, um, study the uh, pathogenic involvement of, of uh, this mutation in this pathology. Um, so the take home message of my talk, um, uh, flow cytometry have uh, some, uh, have many uh, advantage in uh, uh, this field, uh, but the problem remains the, uh, the samples of the patient and the controls for uh, the right results. Uh, and I don't, uh, I haven't not talked about uh, normal values because for many of these tests, there's no normal values uh, identified. Uh, um, so the close collaboration with physicians, with other groups, with specialists of the companies are very, very important. And uh, obviously the main effort uh, have, must be made um, in, uh, to ensure the accuracy of the test, because as I, said, as I said before, we respond to a patient and not to a reviewer. Um, that's the main difference between clinical, clinical flow cytometry and research flow cytometry. And this is uh, uh, the group I work with. This is my mentor. And thanks to the patient and the family and all of you. Thanks.